Hi everyone, welcome. As we get started 2018, let's talk about employee engagement because I know that for a lot of the HR leaders and professionals, they really care about creating a sustained and engaged workplace, yet oftentimes they come across also the obstacles, um, challenges, and even resistance to their journey of engagement at the organizations. So Alex, in the new year, what can we do to, to make engagement a workplace a reality? Yeah, thanks. Well, I think first thing we need to do is define what we mean by engagement. This is a topic that we've all been circling around, circling around for so long and it's so important, but no one's really been able to put their finger on it and get it right yet. So how we define engagement is we look at it as an inside job. It's such a personalized experience as to whether you find meaning and you feel connected to your organization. So trying to do engagement at staff is really you know, a bit of a misnomer. It's not something that can be a, an only top-down approach. Mm -hmm. And although the foosball tables and the free lunch are great, these have become hygiene factors. They're not engagement anymore, they're simply cosmetic in the organization. So first thing we need to do is look at how we engage people with their, their why, their inside meaning as to why they work in that organization. Mm -hmm. I agree. And on top of that, I think it's really important to know that employee engagement is more than an engagement survey itself because engagement essentially is the culture embedded into the organization that we have or have not created. Mm -hmm. So um, don't confuse the measuring stick with the initiative itself. Completely agree. And then the final thing we'd say about defining engagement is that it's for all of us. While it's often seen as an initiative led by HR, because it's grounded in the meaning that we make in our relationships between people, it really needs to be owned by all of us. So that's looking at the team level, looking at between managers and their staff, looking at across divisions. How do engagement, um, how, is, how does it manifest in, in the seams between, the, between those people? Okay, so we can all agree that to achieve engagement is everyone's responsibility and we all need to get involved in creating that kind of culture where we are emotionally committed to what we do. And here comes the $1 million question, what can we do about it? Mm -hmm. So today we have three suggestions. First, we suggest creating a culture of trust first before getting really complicated and sophisticated with the engagement initiatives. Because let's, down, let's get down to the basics. Um, trust is still very much the building block to any meaningful relationships, including employee engagement. And to build trust at workplace, uh, it really needs to be nurtured over time through all of our organizational practices. Uh, and one thing about trust is that it takes a long time to earn it and gain it, mm -hmm. and such a quick time to lose it. So make sure that our organizations really take the, the sweet time to build a foundation of trust first. Mm -hmm. And um, here you want to um, reveal the communications and policies around, um, for example, um, the reward system, performance management system, uh, the leadership communications, mobility, just to you know, name it important, some important touch points where employees are used to measuring up their trust levels and buying levels with the organizations. And the most important thing, Alex, mm -hmm. it's really important to review, review how your managers interact and communicate with their staff mm -hmm. on a, on a day-to-day -day basis because this important relationship is really the magic of, of engagement. You could mm -hmm. break it or make it. Absolutely. And it can be a hard question to ask. Do our staff trust us? Do we have transparency? But really until we have that foundation in place, there's no point in building engagement initiatives on top of that. So focus on the foundation first. Once you have that trust in place, then we suggest you move ahead to help staff define what is meaningful for them. Because we say engagement is an inside job, it has to be connected to such a personalized experience of what's meaningful in work, what's meaningful in a career, what's meaningful in an industry for an individual. These things are gonna change with age and stage, they're gonna change with career level, they're gonna change as people move around through an organization. So it needs to be an ongoing meaning-making exercise. We suggest you can do this not just through workshops of helping people to find their why and helping them find their purpose, but also by creating narrative, showing leaders who've got strong purpose and strong connection to the meaning of the organization, but also being able to find those influences throughout the organization. They could be at any level, really finding those people who can be evangelists to say, here's what my work means to me, here's how I found it. 
It doesn't mean that every other colleague needs to replicate that, but they'll get the energy and they'll see the, the initiative that their colleagues have, that connection with, with your business. Mm -hmm. The third thing we'd say is once you've got that trust and once you've helped staff to define and really pinpoint what's meaningful for them, focus on the high payoff activities. We so often see this um, broad approach to engagement, the one size fits all approach, and it just doesn't work. So think about Pareto, where's the 20% of effort that's gonna give you the 80% of outcomes? It means that you're not trying to satisfy everyone and make everyone happy because we all know how that works out. Mm -hmm. It really means that you're zeroing in on a small um, number of touch points that are gonna give you the biggest result for your engagement. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And just to echo your point of not using, not avoid using uh, the one size fits all approach to address engagement because well, while it's really nice to have the free perks, the free gym and appreciation day, even birthday leave, these generic initiatives often have very little impact mm. on the engagement level, especially if, uh, at the personal level of engagement. Um, so try, uh, avoid, uh, try to avoid using these initiatives and what it really works in the longer term, we recommend is to use um, a design thinking approach to read out engagement insights and then and then applying the insights to to you know to address engagement. Uh, for example, if we have these engaged employees who say they you know oh my work is being really recognized, well well it was really good to you know give them more job wellness and probably free lunches. What would actually work in the longer term is to actually understand how they feel about. Uh, the communications of career uh, development or performance management are being handled and implementing the relevant action plans to address those issues. Absolutely. So with that in mind, we'd encourage you to reach out to us. We'd love to collaborate. This point around design thinking is so key. Mm -hmm. This is how we collaborate with our clients, just as engagement is so unique to the individuals, it's also unique to you as a business. So. Again, reach out to us, we'd love to work with you on those insights and thank you very much.